Did you know that in Cyberpunk 2077, if you hover your cursor over the game's version number, that number will change to 2077. Hello and welcome to Hidden Video Game Details, the series that aims to show you the things that you may have missed in your favourite games. So the story of Officer Owens in Batman Arkham Knight is a sad one. And we all know that after the tragic events of the diner, you can check in on Owens to see how he's getting on, with the dialogue changing depending on whether or not you chose to shoot when under the effects of the Scarecrow's fear toxin. And that's where I thought the story of Officer Owens ended. But that's not quite true. You see, as you approach the end of the game, you can find Owens sitting at his desk, and you can even talk to him. I apologise if I said anything bad during that attack. I, I can't really remember who I spoke to. Uh, I was too terrified to care. Is this how it is from now on, Batman? Having these damn relapses? I, I don't think I can take it. Now, it's worth mentioning that in this particular playthrough, I didn't shoot in the diner. And I'm guessing slash hoping that if I did shoot, then this would play out differently. If anyone is out there who did shoot in the diner and has reached this point in the game, could you let me know if anything changes? I mean, I'm guessing that it does, but I don't have a save where I chose to shoot in the diner because I'm not a psychopath. So if I asked you to rate the rudeness of video game doors, I'm guessing that you would wonder if the years of hunting easter eggs and details has caused me to go insane. And whilst that might be the case, one of the doors in Enter the Gungeon is very rude. If you try to approach the door that I do without the required key, this will happen. So not only does the door laugh in your face, but as you walk away, it will also spit at you. Now, I don't know if there's an in-game explanation for why this door is such a dick, but I'm sure if there is, you guys will tell me. So one of my all-time favourite details in games is the PlayStation controller speaking to you if you paused for too long in Zombie Army 4. It was a really cool use of the controller's built-in speaker, and something that I wish that more games would make use of. That's where Spider-Man 2 comes in. In the Hunt to Live, Live to Hunt mission, Peter and Harry team up to save Tombstone. After a job well done, the pair will meet up on a roof where Harry will fist bump Peter, causing the symbiote to try and bond with Spidey. Well, if you mute your TV and listen to the controller when this happens, you will hear something very cool. So the voice of Venom will growl Peter as the pair bump fists. This sound isn't heard in the game and can only be heard through the controller. Personally, I think that this is awesome. So I'm something of a Call of Duty Zombies novice. So you can imagine the fun I had trying to activate the Pack-A-Punch machine on the Blood of the Dead map in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. For those that don't know, Pack-A-Punch machines give your weapons a damage boost, making even the most useless of guns a little less useless. This means that unlocking the machine usually requires multiple steps, and the Blood of the Dead map is no different. Anyway, after completing the required steps, you can call in the Pack-A-Punch, and if you look to your right, you can see the machine being teleported from a nearby bridge to the roof that your character is standing on. Now what's really cool is, the bridge that you see the Pack-A-Punch teleport from is actually the same bridge where the Pack-A-Punch was located on the Black Ops 2 map Mob of the Dead. Now I'm guessing that a lot of Zombies players knew this already, but even if you don't play Zombies, you have to admit that this is an awesome nod to a previous game in the series. Now we briefly touched on the Helldivers 2 tutorial in episode 156 of this series, where we discovered that standing still would trigger an awkward response. Well, it turns out that not only is the Helldivers 2 tutorial pretty damn funny, but it has even more really cool details. Now you may think that given that this is just a tutorial, you're at no risk of dying. Well, you'd be wrong, very wrong. To teach you how to dive and go prone, bullets are sprayed at a waist high level. Of course, going prone will save you from the hot lead whizzing just inches over your head. But what if you didn't go prone? Well, let's find out. <laughs> so for this next part, make sure you dive into the trench and stay down the whole time. That's that's it. Uh, may I have your attention, please? You may be 
required to dive to the ground to pass your training. Please resume. So not only do you get some hidden dialogue, but you also get to see the body count slowly rise with each death which doesn't make a lot of sense, but is cool anyway. Now, something that a section of the Helldivers community has complained about is friendly fire. Most games don't let you shoot allies, and for good reason, people can be dicks. But one thing is for sure, it does raise the stakes. Now, in the tutorial, a cardboard cutout Helldiver is supposed to blow up so that you can learn the reinforcement mechanic. But if you take matters into your own hands and destroy the cutout, this will happen. Helldivers fight in squads. Meet your new squad mate. Greetings, fellow Helldivers. Man down! Don't sweat it, soldier. Friendly fire is just an unavoidable fact of life. Nothing at all you can do to prevent it. What you can do is use the reinforcement stratagem to replace your fallen comrade. So the game predicted that some players would choose to destroy the cutout and recorded dialogue explaining that friendly fire is just part of being a Helldiver which personally, I think is brilliant. So the final Helldivers 2 detail is perhaps the funniest of them all. After completing all of the tasks set before you, you simply have to cross this line to become a Helldiver. On either side of you are walls, which at first glance look like some sort of memorial. Or at least that's what I thought anyway. However, on closer inspection, it turns out that this is actually a contract, and crossing the line means that we are signing this contract. Now, I'm not going to spend the next three hours reading the entire contract back to you, but a couple of the more interesting clauses include reading section 3.3 of the contract, actually voiding section 3.2 of the contract, and reading the contract at all makes it binding. So you're pretty much screwed whatever you do. Now, the release of the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection has been underwhelming to say the least. Instead of getting proper remasters of the original trilogy, Konami just ported the HD collection from consoles, but somehow made them worse, because f Konami. Anyway, the beauty of playing the games on PC means that there are a ton of mods that you can download to make the collection look and play like it should, which is the least this series deserves. Anyway, the first detail from MGS3 is extremely impressive for a game that originally released in 2004. After fighting Ocelot, the fear will turn up and ruin the fun, causing Snake to seek refuge in a very dark cave. Now, you can choose to wander around the cave with almost zero visibility or you can just wait a few minutes for your eyes to adjust. So the longer you wait, the better your vision will be when in the cave. You know, kind of like how eyes work in real life. It's a crazy attention to detail. This next detail is perhaps even more impressive. Just above Snake, you can see a group of bats sleeping. Firing Snake's gun will cause the bats to swarm around his head, and if you're close enough, even damage him. Well, to make the bats go back to where they came from, you can simply equip the sonar and ping it, which will cause this to happen. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know why the sonar had this effect on the bats. Honestly, I think the world would be a better place if people just admitted when they didn't know something instead of making a misinformed comment. But if you do know the reason, then let me know down below. So that's it. If you know of any cool things in games that you think I should check out, then please leave them in the comments down below. As always, a big thank you for watching, and I'll speak to you all soon.